Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mad Lit Musings with Jamie Jo Wright. And today I have with me a good friend from Oregon. We are states and states and states and states away from each other. But this is Christina Suzanne Nelson. Hey, Christina. Hi. <laughs> I'm so glad to have Thanks you with for us. for having me. Yeah, this is awesome. I love the fact, too, that, I mean, if people are watching this on YouTube, we both kind of sit and just spin in our chair. Oh, yeah. I notice we're yeah. both, like, just kind of rocking back and forth. <laughs> This is what we do. We rock in our I chairs. I, I have told myself that the next time I get an office chair, I need one with a lock. Yeah. Because I do this so much when I'm talking. Mm -hmm. I can't hold still. In fact, I was doing a podcast once and someone thought I was antsy, like I needed to go. And I was like, <laughs> no, no, I don't need to go anywhere. We're fine. I'm just, I just spin. It's like spin class in my chair while we're talking. <laughs> I've been thinking about taking the carpet out of my office, but I'm afraid that if I did, I'd find myself just pushing myself across the floor back and forth. It, it'd be writer's <laughs> disco every day, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I could change the tones of our stories a little bit, I think, but we'll see. <laughs> well, you have a new release out called What Happens Next, which is a gorgeous cover too, by the way. I love it. I know. Cover. I think it's my favorite cover. Of yeah, all of my books. Yeah, I was looking at all your book covers and I did decide that this is my favorite. So not that that matters in the scope of life, but there you go. <laughs> so, and I love the implications because there's so many questions with the cover with the bicycle that's just tipped over. And every time I see that, I'll, I'll let you know that it reminds me of the time I rode my bike. I think I was 11 and I rode it down my driveway to get the mail for my mom and I skidded out and then I landed and the handlebar jammed up under my rib cage and I remember laying at the end of the driveway and I couldn't breathe it was just a typical you got the wind knocked out of you but when you're 11 and you don't know that that's a possibility yeah. I was like I'm gonna see Jesus and I'm not ready I don't want to go <laughs> so as much as I love this cover it also brings back some memories Christina thanks a lot uh -huh. <laughs> my first brush with death <laughs> It makes me think of my first bike and I had this green bike and, um, and I would at my grandparents' house, ride it around the block with my grandpa over okay. and over and over again. Aww. And this summer we had, my grandparents had friends that came to visit. My grandpa was a professor at Oregon state mm. and, um, his grad students would often be very involved in our family. And so, um, so Anna and Manuel and their three boys came to visit for a couple of weeks. Okay. And as they were leaving, my grandmother whispered to me, I think you should give Manola your bike. Cause I had apparently been outgrowing it and he had really enjoyed it while they were there. Oh, and sure. I was just like, okay, so I take the bike over and Manola, do you want to take this bike with you? <laughs> I remember just watching them leave and be my green bike. Oh, childhood <laughs> trauma. And after that, your life just went downhill. Oh, so All funny. because I'm of a green sure, bike. I am sure my grandparents got me another bike. My grandparents were the nicest people in the oh, entire yeah. world. They were teaching me to be generous. Right. And But, you know, all I remember is... <laughs> mm -hmm. did your green bike have one of those banana seats do you remember those banana seats yes yes those were the best they really were I do not understand why bikes aren't still like that I don't know you try and sit on these little seats and I'm like not to be rude but have you looked at the size of most people's you know and then you gotta uh -huh. sit it on this little tiny square that's uh -huh. about six inches and I'm like it doesn't even make sense it's like it it defies physics yeah if i could get a <laughs> banana seat for my bike now i could put a kid behind me and just like yeah. just do and and then one up on the handlebars <laughs> and of course none of us would be wearing bike helmets you know and you have the tassels no, no. hanging off the yeah it's great well this is a great conversation thanks so much for being with us today i know i'm just kidding <laughs> all you want to know about jamie and christina's bikes. yeah yeah, we we put a lot of thought into what we're going to talk about here on the podcast today. As everybody can tell, I'm sure bikes are the center of our lives. Not. <laughs> <laughs> but 
but there is a bike on the cover. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the story and, and hopefully people will remember that and not the weird stories that we just talked about. So the story actually starts with a podcaster. Hey. Um, so Faith is, is a podcaster who has this really popular podcast about people who have, um, they've done amazing things after they've been through really traumatic experiences. So kind of they, they've okay. turned their life into something great. And, and, um, and, you know, kind of like we all hope that we will do if we yeah. have a traumatic experience that will make something great come out of it. Um, so oh, is that what we're and, supposed to do with trauma? Yeah, I, that's what we're supposed to do. I think, I don't know. I, that would have been nice to know about 30 years ago. <laughs> I have this great t-shirt that says I make things up and that's pretty much. Okay. You know, that works. I'm, all right. Yeah. I'm a fiction writer. So, uh, <laughs> so, um, so she finds out that her childhood friend from the summer of 1987 has been missing since right after her family left this small town. And mm. so there the family is asking her to come back and and help bring attention to the case and maybe find out what happened to Heather. Mm -hmm. But the the most fun for me was writing the perspective of Heather as a 10-year-old and mm. going through that summer. So we kind of see the build up to this this disappearance and yeah. it was just so fun to relive 1987 and I had so much fun with that 1987 I'm an 80s girl yeah I don't remember the 80s no I'm it's, yeah well you know it's tough being 26 and a podcaster but someone's <laughs> got to do it yeah no yeah. 19, 1987 yeah those were the years but, you know, it's interesting, too, because if you look at crime um, and, like, missing persons cases from the 80s, how far advanced we are. I mean, it doesn't seem like we are because there's still so many unsolved missing cases. But the tools that are available to find mm -hmm. some of these missing children is leap years ahead of where we were mm -hmm. when I was a kid. Yeah. And when you well, were and, and within, <laughs> there are so many cases that are being solved now because we have the technology now and yeah. we have different resources. So, you know, that it's really interesting. It's an interesting time in history, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it must've been interesting writing this. I mean, so you have the perspective of Heather, who's the 10 year old, and then you have some other perspectives in this book as well. So tell us a little bit about those characters. So Dora is the mother of Heather and she just really got stuck after her daughter disappeared. And I can imagine that if one of my children disappeared, I wouldn't mm. want them to ever feel like I gave up on them. Right. I mean, what if, what if they came home? What if, right. What if something happened and they were found and, and they came back and it looked like I just went on with my life and didn't yeah. think twice about the fact that they weren't in it anymore. And, you know, so I think Dora is stuck in that loyalty that she feels to to her daughter mm -hmm. and a, a lot of times that gets in the way of the relationship she has with her remaining children and her husband okay. so it's kind of that that postponing the grief that she really mm -hmm. needs to experience yeah um because she doesn't want to let her child down and you right. know none of us want to let our children down no no we don't and i think the concept of having that question mark of not having finality either mm -hmm. and knowing what happened would make it, I imagine, I can't speak from experience, obviously, but I feel that would make it harder to move on even. Yeah. Yeah. So we have Dora and we have Faith and we have Heather. Okay. Yeah. So all so, and when perspectives. I, when I say their names, it makes me think of, so the, the names were actually given um, by my newsletter subscribers. Oh, how so fun. we did this really fun. I, I threw some names that I was um, thinking of for each character when I first started writing or was just getting ready to start writing this story. And, and I knew what years approximately each one of these characters was right. born in. And so then mm -hmm. I had kind of brainstormed some names for each one. And I got hundreds and hundreds of emails 
from newsletter subscribers saying, oh, go with this name or go with this name because this is my sister's name or, oh, hey, what have you thought about these? And then they get a list. And so I have this huge list where I was keeping tallies okay. for each one of those okay. names. And, yeah. And these are the ones that went so out. It was huh? really fun. That's cool. It was funny because as I was looking at the book and, and skimming through it and stuff, the name Heather was such a popular name back in the 80s too. So I mean, it was totally... Totally consistent and really made you feel like you were in the 80s because you don't really hear of Heather's being born. No. In current, it's not a popular name anymore, but in my mm-hmm. era, it seemed very popular. Yeah. My cousin's but, name is Heather. Yeah. Yeah. I had several friends named Heather. So, well, this is cool. Okay. So we have the three perspectives. So, mother, missing child perspective, best friend, all grown up perspective. So we obviously have some different time periods we're working with here too. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm going to guess that stringing through all of their lives is this element of loss and grief, Mm -hmm. I would imagine. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, Well, for Faith, she, so grief and bereavement are a little bit different. Grief we use as this, this word that we usually, um, we usually think of grief as being the loss of so, someone that you're grieving the loss of a, a right. loved one, but um, grief can be over so many things. And for Faith, she's just lost a marriage that she wasn't ready to lose, oh, and okay. it wasn't of her design, of her her choice. Right. And now her life looks very different. Her future looks very different. Her. Mm-hmm. Um, relationship with her daughters is different because now she's sharing time with her husband in a very different way. The girls are gone for the summer to Hawaii with Mm. her ex-husband and his soon to be new wife. They're getting married in Hawaii. And, and um, so she has all these adjustments to make and, you know, there's a grief, there's a period of grief that we have to go through when our dreams are shattered that way. Yeah. So sure. So that's a lot of what's, what she's facing. And then Dora has this, this grief for the hopes and dreams she had for Heather. Mm -hmm. And if Heather even exists anymore on earth and what, you know, what's, what's going to happen next right? (laughs) with that. And, um, but she needs that permission to, to grieve her daughter. You know, yeah. it's like she needs someone to say that's okay. It's okay to do that. It's okay to be mm-hmm. sad. It's okay to to go through this process. So yeah. um we actually there's a, a grief support group in town that you'll see they they spend some some time in wrestling with some of those questions, yeah. which is something that I don't do, which is probably why I wrote about it. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> You don't wrestle with the questions because you don't no, want to, or you don't no, wrestle with them I because you just don't wrestle. So I okay. often, I, like, I am the first person to not deal with grief. I am okay. the first person. Yeah. So a lot of times when I write about it, I find it's probably something I need to work on. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So yeah. my dad died four and a half years ago. Okay. And when my dad died, it was right when um, the birth mother of three of my kids died. And we actually acquired two more children right <laughs> right in that time. So it all happened at one time. And the opportunity to even think about that loss of relationship with my father, which it's like it had to, I can, I can relate to Dora in that I just didn't have time for that. <laughs> sure. Know? Yeah. Just, like that didn't fit into what I needed to do because I had two kids two yeah. little kids who had just gone through this traumatic experience oh. and you know all of these other things like emergency appendectomy and things like that oh well right but right. yeah so I was busy <laughs> so I think that <laughs> I think that we we often can come up with a thousand excuses to not feel the feelings that right we have to deal with yeah so why do you think, here's a question for you. Why do you think we don't want to deal with those feelings? Oh, they're so unpleasant. 
Um, yeah. I think we don't want to deal with our grief because it hurts, mm -hmm. but also it's admitting that that relationship or that experience or that, that time is over. Yeah. And, and that's not something, that's not something that's easy or comfortable. Right. The concept of closure is not necessarily a relief. It's, it's hurtful. Yeah. And the finality yeah. of, of death in our lifetime is, I mean, we can have this assurance that we'll see our loved ones in eternity, but mm -hmm. that doesn't change the fact that, you know, we may be here for many more years. Right. And right. not be able to have that access. Exactly. Oh, absolutely. In fact, I was watching an interview. I don't know if you ever saw it. Um, Andrew Garfield, who played one of the Superman, um, not Superman, sorry, Spider-Man in one of the Spider-Man movies. And he also has played in other movies like, um, no, I don't remember. But anyway, he's a popular actor. He had just lost his mother and then he went on to one of the talk shows. And they had asked him how he was doing and he got a little bit choked up. And then he said something profound and I'll probably paraphrase it wrong. So you'll want to Google it afterwards. But he said something to the effect of, I don't, I don't wish away these tears. I don't ask them to go away because the tears are the remnants of the unexpressed love that I didn't have an opportunity to tell them while they were alive. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so he said, I don't wish my grief away because it keeps their memory close. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh. you know, mm -hmm. like, wow. To actually embrace grief and hold on to it, not in a sense of wallowing in it, but hold on to it because it's a reminder of how blessed you were to have loved mm -hmm. that person or had that person in your life for however long mm -hmm. of a time. That's That hit me too, because my mom passed away a year and a half ago as well. And it, you know, it's just, yeah, it's hard to walk through those times and actually allow yourself to feel mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, let's take a quick break and then we come back. Um, I want to, I want you to tell us everything else that we should know about this book that we didn't already talk about <laughs> in five minutes. No, <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take a quick break. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Hi, everyone. We are back here at Madlet Musings with Christina Suzanne Nelson, who is currently published by Bethany House Publisher. And you also have other books out by Bethany House and that you've written in the past as well. So this is not your one and done with Christina Suzanne Nelson. She's got a whole backlist you got to check out too. So, but where is this story set? Is this set in Oregon, your home state, or did you travel to some random spot? Is that a really hard question or did we, did I freeze? Hey. No, you froze. <laughs> I froze? Like you froze for time. a moment. That's funny. The entire time you're like just moving the whole time. And I'm like, so where did you, where did you write this story? Or did you just put it in some random spot? And you're like, just went through questions about grief and loss i mean like really hard questions and i just asked you where your so story was about <laughs> it's too personal jamie don't ask me that on a podcast <laughs> so what was the question again jamie <laughs> so i didn't know where you set the story was it in oregon or somewhere else I am so not editing out this okay. blueprint. It's too fun. It's too fun. For you, I will answer this deeply personal question. <laughs> it's set in a small town in Oregon. Wow. <laughs> that was hard. <laughs> Are you okay? Or do we need to end the podcast well, now? <laughs> I'm going to need a little sip of water now. Oof. Oof. It's hard to admit sometimes where we set our stories. I know those are deeply personal. <laughs> I actually, it's one of the reasons I love the cover though, mm -hmm. is because it reminds me of, I, I grew up in this little dot of a town in okay. the mountains and it so reminds me of the logging roads. 
oh yeah around where I lived like, yeah. yeah okay I've been there yep so. and those old logging roads really are interesting I went when I was out there last year we did some exploration and you get on some of these old logging roads and there's so much history and you know it's funny though that you set I'm going to make an assumption because the bike is tipped over on the cover that that's where Heather goes missing but it's funny that you set that there because we were on an old logging road and I'm sitting and this is before I knew what your book was going to be about. I'm thinking, man, if I was a kid back here, this would be the perfect place to get abducted. Just disappear. <laughs> and then but, you came out you with know, this book and I'm like, do we have ESP? Are we really that connected, Christina? <laughs> it's so funny. I was explaining to my little girls um, as we were driving by Blodgett a while back, how our parents would let us walk on the railroad tracks from our house to the little tiny Blodgett store. Yeah. And I mean, it was a, a couple miles in the back of nowhere where really our concern was more like cougars or something. Right. Right. But, but yeah, we were just, we were like, um, stand by me. Oh, <laughs> we were walking down the railroad tracks. Also, we could get like a grape crush and, Oh yeah. Oh, of course. Oh, I have one yeah. of those in the fridge right now. I keep a couple of them. I am dead serious. I keep grape crush on hand every now and then when I need to revisit my childhood. <laughs> and they're yeah, really good with a peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> my dad would take us in to the store really early in the morning before we go fishing and we could get whatever. Oh, I love that. I love that. That's awesome. Okay, so anything else we should know about this book? Is it super suspenseful? I mean, because you say like a child goes missing. Would you label this as suspense or is this more thought provoking? Um, I think that what I am writing is more of a character driven suspense okay. mystery mm -hmm. um, rather than a plot driven because it, it goes deeper into the experience of the characters. Mm -hmm. um, then you would typically get in a suspense when you're you're really just focused on that right experience this period of time um um and, and maybe more mystery i guess mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. suspense no i think that's or great i love it somewhere in between mystery and suspense yeah, I always figure mystery is more like you're trying to figure out what happened and suspense is where you're, you never know when gunshots are going to start exploding around you. And yeah, it's more high octane and fast moving. So yeah, awesome. But this is one of those books too, that if you're not into like scary, this isn't going to be scary. This is more like we're going to no. take this journey with these people and just experience the struggles and the things yeah. that they went through, right? Yeah, there's a bit of a, a coming of age kind of okay. feel, I think, mm -hmm. especially when you when you go through the the chapter set in eighty seven. It just awesome. Okay. Great, Jamie. You're not moving. I'm not moving oh. again. You're moving. Oh, you are now. Am I moving? I'll just I'll just keep spinning my. I stopped spinning my chair. That's why. That's why the internet. There you go. They, the the internet. internet needs this. They need the chair movement. We go back to the chair movement. <laughs> well we are this reaching helps the special internet waves it does it does it keeps them moving otherwise they get lazy <laughs> these are the things i'm not really supposed to say out loud <laughs> oh, yeah well we do and then whatever it's it is what it is right so christina where do people find out more about you about your books follow your career follow your future novels and everything well, pretty much um, any platform you can find me at Christina Suzanne. Just make sure not to put an E on the end of Suzanne. Right, um, my website is just my name, awesome. Christina Suzanne Nelson.com. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for laughing and um, telling us about your green bicycle and talking about grief. <laughs> this has been an interesting conversation with Christina Suzanne Nelson, folks. <laughs> You know, every time I have a conversation with you, it is interesting, Jamie. <laughs> it's always wow. fun. Oh, boy. Yeah. One of these days I'll, you know, come up with a script and everything, but not, not, <laughs> not in the near future. I we'll just roll it. with it. <laughs> All love right. It. Well, thanks for being part of the podcast today, Christina. Thank you for having me. This was great. <laughs>